This video is brought to you by Audioblocks. What up you guys, I'm Janik from Cinecom.net and welcome to Copycat Friday. It's a series where we recreate effects from movies and music videos. And today we are recreating the new music video from Drake and Travis Scott, Seiko Mode. Nice one Janik, you're gonna do a great job next week. I've got no idea what Lorenzo is doing though. Now things are getting weird around here. Hey guys, it's my last day in Belgium today. In a few hours, I'm heading off to Iceland. So I'm probably leaving halfway this video. Anyways, I'll be back in 10 days. But in the meanwhile, Janik and Lorenzo are gonna keep making awesome videos for you. As for today, we're obviously having a look at Seiko mode from Travis Scott and Drake. It's jam-packed with dozens of video effects, so we just had to recreate them. There are even so many incredible effects in there that we decided to make two parts. But for now, let's start with recreating that set. Word around town as I got the city bumping. And frankly, they did not see that coming. I'm the perfect mix of the Gestapo. The music video Sicko Mode is packed with a ton of great effects, so that's why we're going to do this in two parts. But first up, we're going to build a set that looks kind of similar to what they have. It's raining outside for the next few days, so that's why you have to do it inside. But that's okay, because we got a nice studio. Let's do this! Just to get some neck while I'm checking my set list. No second guessing, you're not a contestant. If you're not in the circle, you get no spot on the guest list. Without a question, I'm well invested. Women impressed with me. I mean, I guess I mean I get to be the meanest in my league. I'm sick. Die, die, diameter. You get no piece of the pie. I'm fly my parameters. A minus to a calendar. So here we have it. It almost looks exactly the same as in the clip, isn't it? Well, except for the Berlingo, maybe. But that doesn't matter. We've got something that looks similar. Let's see how we can create those three effects right now. And the very first thing that you have to pay attention to is that you have something that lays in the foreground. We've got this spray can right here in this box. For the rest, nothing is important. Only these two things because we're going to use them to track our shot later on. You could also work with tracking marks, etc. But then you have to remove them. So the easiest thing is just to work with stuff that may be visible in the shots. That whole zoom motion is done by creating multiple pictures. That is what Jennings is doing right now. You want to start off way in the distance, zooming in onto your subject, and look for a point on your display that you can align up with something in your set. We have this box in the scan over there, which we are going to use as tracking marks, but we can also use that to align our camera to. And that way we are sure that that specific part right here is always in the middle of our frame. Then just move up a little bit. Jennings is doing that on the skateboard because it's just easier for them. And then you want to zoom out slowly each time, which is kind of the same as the famous Hitchcock zoom or the dolly zoom effect, but you're actually going to zoom a lot more than usual. So you really want to zoom in as much as you can in the beginning, and once you come close to your set, zoom out as much as you possibly can. Now before we start, I'd first like to thank Audioblocks for sponsoring us today. Audioblocks is an amazing library where you can find music and sound effects. The cool thing is, is that you only have to pay a single price per year, and with that you can download unlimited clips from your growing library. So that means you can try out different sound effects and music clips before you are going to finish up your video. And you can use that for either personal and commercial projects. So definitely make sure to check it out. You can do so by clicking the first link in the description below. Now what makes the effect so sick is that we can see Travis not changing with the perspective. So that means Travis sits in a different layer. And that's why we're going to have to set up the green screen. So let's do that. It's going to be very important that your green screen shot is going to match with the background. That's why I would always recommend to set up your green screen in the same environment. For example, if you're shooting outside, then also set up your green screen over there. As for here, we've got a big tungsten lighting in the back, which is why we also have the same lighting here. Uh, coming out behind of the green screen and that way we're getting that same nice backlight. Also, you've got a magenta light there in the back as well. So that's why we also have that coming back right here so that we have the subject with a little bit of uh, magenta here uh, on the back. Now, as of the legs, uh, we did have a little bit of trouble because the legs or the feet of Janik were too dark and that way we would see a bit uh, green in his feet. And so we are adding a tiny light here. The aperture M9 a small LED light to lift up the shadows right here and so the keying will go a lot easier. So we've got a photo sequence and a green screen shot. Now let's fire up After Effects. 
The first thing that we're going to do is import the photo sequence. I've got all my photos in JPEG files. So by right clicking in your project panel and choosing import, file, I can navigate to my photos and select all of them. Before you click import, make sure to enable import JPEG sequence and then hit import. We can now go ahead and drag the JPEG sequence into a new composition. After Effects will see this as one normal clip now. The zooming effect goes back and forward and that's why we're going to hit Ctrl or Command D with the clip selected to make a duplication. Then right click on that duplication, go to Time and choose Time Reverse Layer. Move the clip up to the right and by holding down Shift, you can make it snap to the clip below. Then select both of the clips, duplicate it again and move them to the sides. Keep doing this for as long as you want the effect to take. When you're done, select everything, right click and choose Precompose to group all of those layers together. And this is already your background, nothing more has to happen with that. But since there's a big movement, we're gonna have to track it. So with the Precomp selected, open up the tracker window. If you can't find it, then you can always locate it from the window menu on top. In here, enable position and rotation, which gives you two tracking points that we're going to place over the box and the spray can. The middle square defines the point and the outer, the searching area. Then simply click on Analyze Forward and let After Effects do its thing. But do pay attention while the tracker is running. There is a chance that the tracker goes wild and you're gonna have to pause and adjust where needed. When you're done, go to the menu on top, select Layer, New, Null Object. This null object doesn't do anything, but we can use it to store the tracking data in. So from the tracker window, I'm going to click on Edit Target and make sure that the null object in there is selected. You can then go ahead and press Apply and from the box that appears, you click OK. And then comes the next part, which is your green screen shot. Import that into the composition and with it selected, click on the pen tool from your toolbox. And this allows you to draw a rough mask inside of the green screen. I'm gonna get rid of the surrounding. Next, go into your effects library and search for the key light effect. Apply that to the clip and head over to the effects controls. From here, we can use the color picker to select and remove the green. You can then further tweak the keying from the key light options. When you're done, reposition and scale the clip to the spot that you want your subject to stand. Now, to keep it in that exact same place, we're gonna use the pick whip tool from the layer options. Simply drag it to the null object and this way the clip is gonna stick to the tracking data and keep it on the same spot. Now, depending on your floor, you might want to create a reflection too. To do that, simply duplicate your green screen clip, right click on the one below, then go to transform and choose flip vertical. Move the clip down under the feet of your normal shot and then hit the T button on your keyboard to bring up the opacity. Decrease that according to your situation. Finally, set the blending mode to multiply. Then add a Gaussian blur effect to it and increase the blurriness again according to what looks natural. As a final touch, I'm going to select all of the layers in my composition, right click and choose Precompose to group them all together. On this precomp, I'm going to add the Warp Stabilizer effect. Just let After Effects do its thing and once it's done, set the smoothness to 1%. And by doing this, your whole zooming thing will go a lot smoother. And that is the whole process of the zooming effect. And we honestly did not figure out exactly how they did it. Looking at the music video, it seems like they added a piece of the floor to where he stood. Anyways, we couldn't find any behind the scenes. There was this one Instagram photo which clearly gave away that it was a green screen. But other than that, I think that the way that we did it is a way that you could mimic the effects pretty easy. Anyways, let's continue because there are two more effects that we want to recreate. Now the part where Drake is making these turns where he holds his finger like this, uh, that is also shot in front of the green screen, so we're just doing it's in the same setup right here. Now, very important is now that you're going to shoot this from a tripod. Uh, you can either let the camera run if you like so, or take uh, pictures like they probably done. Uh, it's also in that stop motion feeling. Now, every time that Lorenzo is going to hold up his hand, we're going to make sure that his hand is going to align with something on your screen. And uh, every time that he makes a turn, we're going to make sure that his finger again aligns with that same marking on your display. We're gonna use the same background, so you can already put that into your composition. All of the rest is very easy. You can even do this inside Premiere Pro. Like before, import your JPEG sequence and put it to the top of your composition. Then mask on the inside of the green screen, apply the key light effect to it and remove the green. Then duplicate that layer, move it up to the side, duplicate it again, move it, etc. And this way the clip is looping for as long as you want. Finally, since this is a medium shot of Lorenzo, you want to scale up the background a bit. We're gonna add a Gaussian blur effect to it as well and increase the blurriness for a natural depth of field. 
and that's it! I know, I'm going fast, right? Well, that is because I need to catch a flight in about four hours, so um, I'm gonna leave. Take care, guys, see you all in 10 days. Janik, could you explain the last effect? I'm taking the camera with me, though. Did he just took the camera? Don't worry, we got a spare one. What else did he took? Jordi! The slant effect is pretty easy, and it mostly consists out of practical effects. First, you take some shoes and you attach them to the ground. If you don't want to break your floor, use a wooden platform like we did. Next are the objects. You have two different kind of objects you can use. The first one are the objects you can roll. You can just push them across the floor. And objects that don't roll, you can just tape some fishing wire to it and drag it across the floor. And that way, you don't have to remove the fishing wire in post. And finally, the camera. Just put it on a tripod and the rest is for post-production. You can do this in Premiere Pro as it's again super easy. But let me show you how it's done in After Effects. You have your clip in the timeline. With it selected, hit the R key on your keyboard, which opens the rotation property. Then look for your point where you start slanting. And here you enable the animation for the rotation. Go further in time and rotate the clip to make it follow your movement. Finally, right click on your first keyframe. Keyframe assistant, easy ease out. For the last keyframe, do the same, but now choose easy ease in. This will make the animation start and stop smooth. As you are seeing a border because of the rotation, you have to scale up the clip a little bit. And that was it guys, I hope you liked it. What does Jordi usually say? Keep cool, stay creative. Stay creative guys. So it's five o'clock and we're going home. Except Lorenzo, we taped him to this pallet. See you tomorrow, Lorenzo. Guys, guys. Agenic, the, the door is over there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, for real now, we're just testing something. See if it works.